Hello everybody, this is Minana from School of Data. Um, I am the manager of the School of Data program, uh, project of Open Knowledge Foundation, trying to, um, to teach uh, data skills and data literacy to uh, NGOs and journalists. Um, I'm very happy to host a skill sharing session today with Martin from uh, Refine Pro, and he will introduce himself in a minute. Uh, but just wanted to say that um, that we're here in in Hangouts on Air. Uh, we will be we are welcoming people to join us here. Uh, just share the, the link of the Hangout on the events page, or you are also welcome to to watch us on YouTube live or to watch the video afterwards. Keep an eye on the School of Data blog, um, and we'll, you will see more information about uh, about what happened today. Uh, so without further ado, I will pass the mic. To Martin, who will uh, start giving us an introduction to Refine Pro, and he can tell us everything about what Refine Pro it is. I'm sure you know about Open Refine, and and you know a bit more about Refine Pro. Martin, over to you. Thank you. So thanks for having me today. Um, first, maybe a little about myself. So I started using Open Refine in 2011, and very quickly I started to write on the blog. Uh, open uh, googlerefine.blogspot.com, which, because the tool at the time was still Google Refine. Over the time, I've wrote about 100 tutorials or link to other people's tutorials and get more involved with the community. And this summer, I started Refine Pro, which is hosted instance of Open Refine. So all the same functionality as Open Refine, but through cloud access. So you can connect your project from multiple computers. Uh, we're working toward uh, making it available to share projects with other people. And we provide more compute power since we have, we're not limited by the power of your local computer. So as discussed previously with Milena, uh, this Skillshare will be not an introduction to Open Refine, but more an advanced, uh, more an advanced level with an introduction to the GRAIL language, which is a general Refine expression language, and much like uh, Excel as its expression language, uh, Refine got its own uh, to write function queries and. Uh, have a more precise way to process your data. Uh, at any time, uh, feel free to interrupt me with questions or comments. Uh, don't keep them all for the end. Uh, jump in. Uh, it will make more sense when we are on the topic uh, to address them. And I think I will get started if I didn't forget anything. Yeah, feel free to get started. So I will also monitor the questions on, on Twitter. I'll monitor the questions on the events page. Um, and, and yeah, people, people feel free, of course, those who are already in the Hangout with us to, to drop their questions in chat or to, to, to voice them out. It would be lovely to have as much as possible participation. Um, OK, Martin, kick off. Perfect. So this is the Refined interface. Um, so logo is op is Refined Pro, but today it's exactly the same functionality as Open Refine. And the general Refine expression language, which I will call Grail uh, from now, is a language you can access it from a multiple part of your project. So first place where you can find it is when you go on the cell on the column and look for custom tech facets. This is the interface uh, you have to enter uh, the Grail language. Uh, you find also the Grail available when you want to transform a cell, transform, or when you edit colon and add a colon based on this colon and add a colon by fetching uh, URLs. So when you open a uh, transform windows, the expression is picked up in three different uh, sections. First, at the top, uh, where you write the expression itself. So a long field for you to write 
uh, any expression you want. So, for example, I want to replace all my space by uh, pipe. Not very really useful, but that's I can write my expression. Right here, you have uh, very quick controllers that tell you if there is a syntax error or not, so if your expression is well formed or not. So here I have no syntax error, but for example, if I remove the last parenthesis, immediately refine tell me I'm missing a parenthesis at the offset 21. So I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and add up to 21 and say, oh, I'm missing a parenthesis. So very useful to have a brief overview is, is my syntax right? The second panel just below offer a preview. So here you see the value of your cell before the transformation. And here you see the value of your cell after the transformation. So here we see all the space have been replaced by a pipe. Something, uh, this is just a preview option. So your content is not modified, uh, you just have a glimpse of the effect of your function. So something very useful, here you can correct immediately if what you do makes sense and if it is uh, transforming your data the way you want. And you have an history uh, tab. So the history tab is very useful because it lists all the previous expression you've been using in this project or in different projects before. So if you wrote a quite complex expression or if you just too lazy to rewrite everything, you can just come here and grab the expression uh, you want. So you click reuse. Martin, we lost the microphone for a minute. So I don't know if you're seeing Martin, so if you hear me, um, we can still follow your screen, uh, but we can't hear your instructions uh, for about, I don't know, half a minute now. Milena? Yes. Yes, perfect. Now we can hear you. Sorry about that. Uh, so why did you last me? I think you were you were talking about reusing uh, some expressions. So when you're writing an expression, you got the preview pan that gives you. Uh, an idea of how your cell will be transformed by your expression. The history list all the expression uh, you've been using in this project, but also in a uh, different project. So if you're lazy to just rewrite all your expression, or you wrote a very complex one and you want to reuse it, or you're not sure of the syntax, you can quickly come here and access all of the previous expression we've been writing uh, over the last few days or months, depending on how often you use it. Fine. And finally, for very your favorite expression and the one you want to access all the time and keep handy, uh, Refine offers the option to store them, to place them as favorite, so you can access them very easily uh, on the star tab, which is like your created 
uh, list of favorite expression. And something you click reuse and refine will update and apply the expression immediately. The last tab is the help tab and it lists all the functions available through the Grail language. Uh, to be honest, uh, it's not the easiest documentation to read. Uh, for example, if I take length, which returns the length of an array, uh, this is the only expression you have help you have. And that's what we're going to go through today is showing you the main expression, how to use them, and what is the logic uh, behind Grail. Any okay. questions so far? Okay. Well, Quadrina had a question in the chat, whether it's just what is the limit of expressions remembered? So the limit of the expression what is the limits of expressions remembered? So how many expressions can we can we start remember in the history tab? I have no idea. Uh, it's not unlimited, um, but that's well. I mean, that's easily. Um, I don't know, can I get some fries with the cake? Sorry? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I think if there are questions, people can either speak or over them in the in the group chat. While we're not speaking, okay. to, to keep the mic. So, other important things are regarding the expression function. When you write an expression, and this is talking about uh, transforming data. So every expression you write to the transform at column based on this column or at the column by fetching URL. Only the expression will only apply to the rows or records you selected uh, through facet. So let's do a quick example. If I create a facet on my category uh, column, and only select expression. And then let's say I want to transform the address clean field and add A, B, C, D at the beginning. When I apply my facet, my transformation best transforms only on the 18 cells that match my traction uh, category. So if I look at my address clean, I see my transformation took effect. But if I go, I don't know, to the gallery uh, category, I see my address haven't been transformed. So facet are very useful to select and narrow down your select to narrow down your selection of records you want to correct or transform, and then using the transform uh, function, apply uh, what you want to do. Uh, Martin, just a second, I interrupt you because the sound is still a bit bad, so it breaks a bit. I wonder if people can, uh, can follow. Uh, can you guys just drop a, a very quick confirmation in chat whether the, the sound is okay, if you can follow? Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. People people feel feel about feel cool about it, so go ahead and sorry for the interruption. Okay. I try to speak so maybe. So getting a bit uh, deeper in the Grail, uh, start to look at how you write uh, Grail expression. <laughs> So see, I can just give some very quick example uh, before. First, I uh, will uh, do my first transformation. So we work on the clean data set. So as you understood, I guess, uh, when you write a value, it just grabs a value 
in your current column as is. If you want to use a value from another column, this is possible by writing cells, then the name of your column dot value. So for example, here I will grab the old address uh, value. So if we compare on the screen for the first, my value was 61 by Clearville Drive. The other one is blank, so Refine told me I cannot retrieve a value from something blank. Same one is 21 Adios Island. The old address was Central Island via Toronto Ferry Service, and so on. So writing cells, square bracket, and then the name of the column you want with the quote closing the square bracket dot values, uh, call the value from any cell. So I can, something instead of old address, I can uh, grab the description from the description field. So this is how you call either the value within your column or value from a different column. Uh, if you want to input text directly, uh, you just place it between. So here, all my rows will be replaced by the value text because I enter some text. I can replace this with a world, for example. So this is how you input. Uh, custom text in the facet. Uh, the next step is building the expression. Start with calling the expression, the content of my cell. And then Refine got two ways to build expression, two different syntax. Uh, one which is like Excel. Uh, I start to call the expression I want to use, like the replace function. So I want to replace all my, I will use the same example I used before, all my space uh, with a pipe. So for people that know Excel, very easy way to write your first expression. Uh, you name your function first, and then between parentheses, you place your different argument. First, where you want to do the transformation, so on the value of my column, and then the different argument of the replace, so I replace a blank by a pipe. Uh, here, I can replace my value by calling, if I want to call from another column, I can totally do that by calling the all address, for example, and it will replace all the space from the old address by the pipe. The other way of building an expression is to start with what you want to transform. So here I want to transform column in value in this column, and then write and to do exactly the same effect, a uh, bit different from people uh, coming from the Excel world, uh, people coming from a uh, developers' background will recognize more a way um, the way that they're currently writing their expression. Um, with time, I will recommend to use uh, this syntax as it makes it way more easy to read when you start to write large expression, because you only you can just read it from left to right, which is I take the value 
from this column and I replace all the blank by a pipe. So from here you can add multiple uh, expression in one uh, add multiple function in one expression. For example, if we want to replace all the space that so let's take another example, replace all the A by a B. And then I want to uh, trim my content. So I want to remove all the leading and trailing space. I just the trim function at the end. And because the trim function got no argument, I just open and close a bracket. So if you use this type of ordering, this is very easy to read. Is I take my value, I replace A by B, and then I trim all my content. If you want to do it more the Excel way, it will get a little more complex and harder to read because you will have to say, first I start to trim, and then I replace my value. I will replace A from B. So exactly the same effect. Uh, just this one, you have to read it from inside out. So I go from my value, then I replace, then I trim. So it works. Uh, this is how Excel works. Uh, but from now on, I will just keep with the other syntax. Uh, okay. Not in the chat. No, too far. Um, so so I think Dele, Dele Diller had a question on whether different function syntaxes handle nulls differently. So the question so is here. Yeah. So refine is based on the and the great expression actually is really based on the Java uh, language. Uh, so the way so. Uh, because of this, uh, Grail will always handle it with uh, kind of what uh, Java called null pointer exception, uh, which is I cannot retrieve the value and I generate an error. Uh, this is why on the bottom you can say on error I want to keep the original, set the value to blank, store the errors. So if I go back. And I say store error. So I'm um, uh, Refine will label the errors directly if you select this option. So I will undo this function. Does it answer your question, uh, did it? Perfect. Uh, another thing that I didn't mention earlier, uh, um, Refine is case sensitive. So sell all the address will work, but if I do not capitalize the O, refine will tell me there is no syntax errors. The function is expression is properly formatted, but cannot find the old address column. So all my results are it doesn't exist. So I generate an error. So be very like that's like if you're debugging a Grail expression, first things you need to do is uh, check uh, if everything is capitalized properly. Uh, I spend hours on this uh, trying to figure this out uh, where some error were coming from. Uh, so what we've seen is to have multiple uh, function together, we just need to add a dot uh, to make them work.
back to my first example. So just add a dot and uh, as much uh, function you want. So here I trim and then I like everything to lowercase. If you want to concatenate or put values from two different cells or a regular values plus the content of your cell, the magic uh, expression you're looking for is just uh, the plus sign. So Excel user will know the concatenate functions. Refine don't have a concatenate function. It's way more simpler. You just put a plus between expression you want to use. So for example, if I want to have my um, category and my address, I will just call information from the category cell, add a plus, and get information from my uh, address clean colon, and I see in the preview I've got fraction and my address, and if I scroll down, the old fraction. Uh, if I want to add a space between them, we said to add text, you just place it between quotes. So add quotes, add some text, close the quotes, add another plus to do the concatenation, and uh, add your value. And of course, from here, if you can go crazy and add as many as you want on each. So I want my uh, value to be to little imagination here to lower case. So everything gets uh, to lower case. Um, yes, and one just share. Uh, the link to the GitHub uh, wiki for Open Refine, where there is a page uh, listing uh, the different functionality with Grail. Uh, same thing, if you're looking to uh, quick help, you can check the help uh, tab and if I look for two lowercase, I see that two lowercase just want a string and return the string and return it to the lowercase uh, format. So this being said, I will move, and if there is no other question, I will move to a couple of different um, basic and very useful uh, expression. Yeah. Uh, Juan had a, had a question here in chat. If you can show an example of use case of the option retransform up to n times and to no change. Yes. Uh, I can explain. I don't have, I'm, it's not something I use a lot. Uh, so for people, it's uh, this section. Uh, so Refine allow you to create some loops. And this is not like this is more advanced, so it won't be part of this introduction to Grail. Uh, if you check the L, uh, scroll down until the end, you can go for each or for each index and so on. So you have a way to create loops uh, in your expression. So retransform up to n time until no change is to make sure that refine go through the loop as much as needed. Uh, personally, it's not a function I use a lot. 99% uh, of the time, I just keep uh, the lower part of the expression to its default, which is keep original and don't try to retransform.
Okay, so a uh, couple of expressions I want to say is the replace function, which seems very briefly how to compare uh, string, how to split, and if we got time, uh, getting into the how to build if condition uh, using Grail. So first, the replace function. And first thing is maybe not using Grail, but very keeping what we find is good at. If you want to replace one full uh, one full name by another, uh, the fastest way and the easiest way is still to go through any facet and uh, click the edit button. So, for example, here I want to edit all those and remove the blank space and by enter. So this is. Uh, the easiest way to do transformation and the full content uh, in, a, in, a, in a column. Uh, so the replace function, and I will look into the parent page one column, and here we see we have a lot of uh, commercial and side. And for some reason, we don't want to have the commercial, we want to have the full end um, word in our cell. So we just call uh, the transform and say, I want to replace all my the full string A and D. And in my preview, I can see the first one is null. So it generates an error. Cannot replace anything from uh, something that doesn't exist. Second one is uh, C and do. And here we see our expression works properly. And if you go down, if you reach line number five, expression is parks. Refine cannot find the uh, end commercial end sign, so you do nothing, and so on. It just go and replace the string everywhere, so click. OK. So I've done transformation on 51 cells in the column, parent page 1, with this expression. And if I check my facet, I see that all the friction have been made. And all the cells that did not contain the character we were looking for are just been left as it is. Uh, just giving you a quick other example, if I go until the, sorry, the postal code. So here we have only one postal call. It has a blank sign. So my advice here will be if you just want to edit this one, just go here, remove the blank, and apply it. But if you want to go through the grail, uh, so I will undo. You can something value replace a blank by nothing. So I've got nothing errors for most of the column because it's a blank. But if I apply and I change, my postal code is clean. So the expression is value dot replace, and then I select thank you refine. Uh, the expression is value dot replace, and then if you want to replace by nothing, you just open and close your quotes uh, right away, and it will replace by uh, nothing. So it will basically delete uh, what you want. Uh, it will basically delete uh, anything that is in uh, this part of the function. 
So here we're replacing blank, but this way you can replace uh, specific words, numbers, or uh, content from another cell if you call content from another cell. And that's what we will do now, for example, in my clean address. I can see that sometimes the old address repeat, the clean address repeat in the old address. So still using the replace function, I can say in my clean address, in my, sorry, on column in my orders. Everything that exists in my column address clean, I call my column address clean using this expression. And I want to replace anything and I want to delete everything, so I just open and close. And here we see that the address 301 Front Street West be deleted from the old address. So we find take information from the column you call, check if the string exists in as a column where you apply the transformation, and in this case, replace it by nothing, so delete it. So as you can see, you can build quite complex expression uh, and check between different columns uh, very easily. Uh, so that's all for the Question. Um, any question? Um, as far as I can see, there's nothing in chat or in the events page. So yeah, unless people want to to say something, to say whether again, they are following or not, um, it, um, I, th I think I think it's pretty clear, Martin. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so next thing is comparing string. So. And for this example, I will be uh, comparing strings are more useful when you create them in custom facet. Uh, so first, I will undo all the information I've done on this project. And we just see before that uh, old address and address clean are sometimes the same. My question is like, sometimes are they exactly the same? So in this case, I will call some text facet. And because I'm lazy, I will reuse this expression. But instead of replace, my question is, is my value from the old address is sometimes the same as the one in the clean address? And here, to compare two strings, you just entered not one, but two equal signs. And this is due because thread is based on the Java language. And I'm not, uh, well, I will not dive into the, the reason. But uh, you see that the result of this uh, expression is, is it equal? And the result is a Boolean, so for false or true. The custom facet, when I created it, it creates a new facet, a true false facet. I click on true very quickly. I see that, oh, my record 11, 17, 19, 21 are exactly the same content. So compare two column uh, the quoting. But maybe you're not interested to see if it's exactly equal. Uh, what you want to know is maybe does it contains just like we've seen before uh, the address clean was just the beginning of the old address. So maybe you want to know if my value 
contains the content from the other column. So edit, and here I see my true is way higher. It's an Android 11. And here I see that because it contains uh, if you want front street, it's only part of the old address. In this case, we have match, and uh, we can narrow down and see the 111 that uh, keep part of the address in the clean address, and the 28 that somehow change property address or change the format of the address. Uh, another, another way of doing it is if I go on the website and, for example, I want to know which websites are a part of the Canadian domain name, so r.ca, I can create a custom text facet, and that's my value contains, and because that's a string now I'm, I'm searching contain.ca. I click OK. And something return a true false. So 71 false, which is a dot net dot com, and 99 true. And all those ends with dot ca. So content is one way to compare. Another way is maybe you want not to know if the string contains a particular, but only start with or end with uh, a specific string. So. Data set is from Toronto. Toronto has uh, two different uh, prefix for phone numbers, 416 and 647. So maybe I just want to know which one start with the prefix 416. And it starts with. I click OK, I say, oh, seven of them don't start with 416. This one is 647. This one looks like we have a training space. This one is 905, which is uh, just outside Toronto. Uh, this one has uh, parentheses opening, so very easily. Uh, we start with assumption that they all start. They all should start with 416, and I already found uh, two outliners: one with a parenthesis and one with an extra space. So I know right away that I can start to use a replace function to remove the parenthesis, start to use a replace function to remove or train function to remove the training space. Um, you can use the start with, uh, you can use the same expression with end with, and in this case, we will say, give me all the ones that end with a zero. Not very useful uh, as information, just to present the function. And here we know there is 29 of them that actually ends with a zero. Um, any questions so far? Nope. So, um, 
so I don't know again if people want to to ask any questions or any clarifications or anything that was on your mind. You always wanted to know about refine, and you have now the chance to know it. <laughs> Which ha we have 50 more minutes, Martin, just to um, just yeah. to say that um, I don't know maybe to, to start wrapping up or or again to give uh, to give people time to for questions. Uh, but if there are no questions, go ahead. We'd love to hear as much as possible. So my last. I will just keep one item on the agenda, which is a split function, uh, which is one of the most useful to understand to work within complex a string. But if there is any question, first, maybe it's better to clear them now. It would be really nice to hear the voice of people that are here with us in the Hangout. If you if you have mm -hmm. questions, of course, you can drop them in the chat. Uh, but also feel free to unmute yourself and let us know what's in your mind. OK. So let's just continue. So the split function. Uh, Sometimes you just want a specific subpart of uh, the content of a column. And for example, here I'm just interested to uh, the domain name in a separate field, or I'm just interested by uh, the extension name. So the first thing the refine offer is split into several columns. I call here if I come and say to refine split based on the dot, it will create columns to match, but it works. That's a job, but not very precise. Like you just created four new fields and your original content has been split up away, so not very efficient. I can use this word. Uh, that's why I go in and start with add a colon based on this colon. And I say, let's say I just want to grab the first, uh, so the website name, which is the first section before the dot. So I take my value, I split it. And split expect uh, one characters. So I said now you split my value on every dot you find. So Toronto.baps.org has been split into three segments. Toronto BAPS or Center Island has been has been split into Center Island. And CA. And when you create the split, refine create an array with multiple elements. So the first array has three elements, second one has two, third one has two, CN Tower, dot CA has two elements, CN Tower and CA. So now what you need to tell refine is which element uh, you want to select in this array. To do this, you use two square bracket and you indicate the number of the elements you want to select. So I want the first one. Oops, did not work. I got the second one. Why? Because once again, uh, Grail is based on the Java language, and if there is more advanced Java users, I might be able to tell you why. But for Java, everything starts at zero. So if you want the first element, you have to write zero to select the first element of your of your string. So I will create a colon and call this the name and here we find we create a new colon after call the name with the typo uh, with the content I selected. Uh, so when you use this split function, uh, you can 
go from both ways. So here is based on each dot, and that two is the first one. So if I want to take the second one, I click, uh, I enter one. And if I want to get the third one, I enter two. And for all those that have two dots, so I have three segments or three elements in the array, it's select like the third one. Here you realize actually most of them I got a uh, array index out of the exception. And basically it's because you told refine select the third one, but my array got only two elements. So ask me to select something that doesn't exist. Generate an error. So not very useful if I want to get uh, the extension name, for example only the .org or .ca, because depending on how the website is built, uh, the content is uh, either the second or the third element. This is not a problem, because Refine allows you to go backward in the string. So if I, in the array. So if you select zero, you get the first element. Select one, you get the second element. Select two, you get the third element. But if you want the last element, you just tell Refine to go with minus 1. And from here, Refine will just go by the hand and select the last element. If I enter minus 2, it will go from the hand and select the second before last element. And so on. So here, if I split by minus 1, so I just deleted all the content on my website. Now, I create a set. I only have whatever was at the end of uh, after the last dot. Uh, so, yeah, there is a question for Helge. You see, how would you do that for just the last two elements? Last two elements. Yes. So, go back. I will just uh, use a concatenate function. I take the last. So the two, and I want to add this element. I want to keep the dot with my last element. So if I add some, so here you can add as many space you want to make it more uh, easy to read for you. But here I said, I refine split my value into multiple arrays based on the dot, select the one before the last, add a dot, and resplit my array and select the one from the last. And that's my expression together, so I got my last two elements. Does it answer your question? That's really, really cool. Um, so I, I was really happy. I know refine, and I, I knew the, the split function, but the transformation. But now it seems like you can do so much more with uh, with Drell. So we have just five minutes left. Um, unless there are other questions, Martin, I was wondering if you can talk a bit more about documentation. So that was quite a, a big question before. You yourself said that uh, the help um, the help on Drell is not fantastic, um, and people here in the in the chat uh, shared some GitHub documentation. Um, do you have anything else that you would advise people to use if they want to know more about how to how to really take advantage of this powerful function? Uh, so the first place to check is uh, the wiki, and Juan uh, posted a link to one specific page on the wiki. But here's that the really the entry point. Uh, if uh, on the wiki, and I can share the link if I. And it quickly, 
we also have pages at least all the other uh, tutorials have been written with finance in different websites, including the School of Data website. So on the wiki, we have a page at least all those different uh, resources. And of course, if you want uh, more direct help, uh, feel free to send an email to the refined main mailing list. Uh, there is a couple of people, including myself, uh, Tom, Tad, that are uh, part of, so of the Open Refine team uh, that will provide support uh, and answer your question and help you as much as we can. So if I go on the Uh, here you have the list of created lists. Excellent. And obviously, these resources can always be improved. And um, I, I think we, as well as School of Data, should uh, should provide a bit more documentation on this. But uh, but it's of course um, it's of course already a good start on the website. And and maybe Martin, just one last thing because we you, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Refine Pro, and I think um, at the beginning some people were here, but not not everybody. Do you want to say a couple of words of what's the difference between Open Refine and Refine Pro and and um, when would people need or think it would be useful to use Refine Pro? Uh, so Refine Pro is, uh, so we're part of the Open Refine community. And uh, what we do is we take Open Refine and make it available as a cloud service. So you don't have to maintain or install it on your local machine. You can access it from multiple devices. You can uh, benefit from more concrete power from our dedicated cloud. And what we're working on is also the ability of sharing your project with other people. Uh, so philosophy behind Refine Pro is really to be part of the open Refine community, uh, have developers on our side that will also contribute back to the open refine uh, code and really uh, develop and offer more support and services uh, around refine in general. And so we're currently in private beta. And if you check our website, you can uh, that is that is truly amazing, and I'm I'm very happy there there is a cloud version as well on Refine. Obviously, it's been hard for us sometimes in trainings to get everybody to install the latest versions and to unzip and and make sure that that everybody is up to speed quite quickly. So. Um, I think for trainers in particular, having a, a cloud collaborative version is, is really exciting. Um, so just two more minutes to go. Last time to, to ask that question that was always on, my, on your mind uh, um, about Refine um, before we close with Martin. Anybody else? Um, then please please join me in, in thanking Martin. It was a really, really good one. Uh, it was really great that we went beyond the basics. I think these kind of tutorials and skill shares tend to be a bit basic at the beginning because we never know how the audience uh, will be. Uh, but it was really great to, to hear something different. I think all of us learned quite a lot today. And Martin, so, thank you so much for uh, for taking the time. Um, and we, will, uh, we will try to follow up with the blog post. Uh, where we will add all the links and the videos. So if you if you miss something, you can uh, uh, you can see the recording again. Any any last word, Martin? No, thanks for having me. And if you have question, 
can reach out to me, send an email to the mailing list, we'll be happy to help. Excellent. All right, recording over. Thank you. Thank you.